precipitation up on the plateau in 48 hours. And as we mentioned, not much rain actually fell in the Supai area itself. So it's kind of a, a classic description of a flash flood where you don't see much rain in the area you're in, but you still get the flash flooding associated with it. Now, a fly through just to show you this canyon. It's a very steep canyon. Uh, the canyon uh, goes all the way down to Supai at 3,200 feet to the top of the canyon at about 6,800 feet. And in fact, goes even deeper than that as you head toward the Colorado River. But it gives you an idea of how narrow this canyon is, kind of uh, nature's funnel, if you will, for flash flooding. And we had the perfect scenario. All right, radar for you. There's not much going on around there tonight. That's the good news. There may be a few isolated showers tomorrow afternoon, but it looks like for the most part the rain in the flooded out area has uh, well all but ended. And we come back to the valley just to show you that up to the northeast of town there are a few showers. Don't think they're going to make it into town, but it gives us a way of saying we'll get you an updated forecast in just a couple of minutes. New tonight, a local family torn apart by a plane crash in St. John's. A valley pine. A new test for cancer that could save your life. Still ahead on 3TV News at 9. This is 3TV News at 9. We begin with breaking news right now. A deadly accident near 43rd Avenue and Union Hills. You are looking at live pictures right now. We are being told a car hit a man, killing him. We'll bring you some more information as we get it. This is the beautiful falls and the beautiful place we were just swimming in. And look at that. Unbelievable. Home video of a flash flood racing into the Grand Canyon. It sent people running for their lives. Tonight, the survival stories continue. Mike Watkins kicks off our big story coverage this half hour with home video of a vacation to remember. Just for a last hurrah for the summer. Oh, you weren't even close. Yeah, for a camping expedition made up of two dads and a dozen young friends, this is the way a long-planned last hurrah of the summer was supposed to play out in the Grand Canyon. Look at that water. These trees right here have just been snapping over like twigs. This opening right here was, was full of trees an hour ago, and it's just been snapped on and passed. Look at that water. A summer outing that was then suddenly and unexpectedly transformed into a harrowing and life-threatening ordeal late Saturday night and early Sunday morning when raging floodwaters came roaring through the canyon. We woke up in the middle of the night and it was lapping around our feet. We had to move everything back. We almost died like three times. It probably rose six feet in a matter of minutes. <laughs> Dad Craig Lundquist, one of two adult chaperones in the canyon with two of his sons and ten of their buddies. And it was Craig who shot this extraordinary video documenting the flood from its earliest stages. Right here, and look at this. Oh, my goodness. First is the area's world-famous blue-green water turned into a dark brown soup. Okay. Then as night fell and the churning waters began to boil up into a thick and ominous foam, literally at the foot of their campground. It's hard to tell where the water's edge is. is what, oh, this is here, it's just this foam. Then we packed up our stuff as fast as we could throw it in and, and out, gone. I thought it was a pretty scary situation. I, I don't know, it's gotta be up eight feet. From, uh, from where it was because I know that's where our tent is. But with the waters on the rise, it was a scramble up the side of the canyon in the dark with one of the young boys taking a moment to play TV reporter with water flying from nearby Havasu Falls. The water's lapping at our feet. It's pretty crazy. I mean, just the day before yesterday, we were jumping off the waterfall right there. When you got a lot of people, everybody's just kind of creeping our way up. And the camera still rolling in the light of a new day as the expedition was finally able to join other survivors on higher ground. At that point, a Black Hawk helicopter in position for the final evacuation. A last and unforgettable hurrah of the summer that one group of weary young men say they will never forget. I'm here for three weeks from England and I go for hiking and swimming and end up in a flash flood, getting flown out by a black hawk, and now this. In the Grand Canyon. In the Grand Canyon, yeah, I mean, it's pretty sweet. Up 
Wow, that was Mike Watkins reporting. Now, our big story coverage continues now with two more people rescued from that flood. Dr. David Carfano and his girlfriend, Joelle Hadley, they join us live now in our studios. Thanks, uh, you two, for being here. And uh, you're both pretty adventurous types uh, hiking out there and, uh, <laughs> and, and roughing it, so to speak. But you couldn't have, had, have expected something like this. No, we had planned just a nice overnight hike. Uh, Friday night, we stayed at the top of the hilltop, and Saturday, we actually had a uh, hike down. It was about six, seven hours. Our baggage was lost, and which was actually a good thing because it made us make our campsite on the left-hand side rather than picking where we we're going to go on the right-hand side. You see the video right there. That is just, we're still about a half a mile south of that, so the campsites were flooded and they started having a bellow of a train, you know, it's almost like a, a freight train sound um, waking us all up around midnight. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, at, and mind you, these are daytime photos. We were waking up in the dark and we all had no idea of what was going on. Just, you're just hearing a freight train sound wake you up and you had no place to go and you didn't know that the approximate part where we entered the canyon was still available. Doctor, what was your first thought when you heard that sound and you knew danger was coming? What was your first uh, reaction? Uh, I, I told Joel, I said, Joel, let's get our light sources, let's get warm clothing, and let's uh, have some food and water mm -hmm. available. And then we got our camelbacks and we headed uh, back where we came from. I looked at the wall, the, the, the side that our tent was abutted up against to, and that was just a complete wall. So we were trapped there, we were trapped downside, and the only place to go was back up. The Indians had a refuge, which was a flat area for it, uh, anticipated floods. And most of the 120 of the campsite uh, uh, campers went there. There was six of us, us and then a, a, a veteran guide that went up a little higher than that at the level of the falls. Again, it was dark, we heard, but the, the trail that led to the village uh, was obliterated. So we had no, pl we were trapped in the whole canyon. Um, and so we ended up going to one area, it was the sacred ground, a cemetery. Uh, and then Bobby, within 10 minutes, that mm -hmm. refuge area where about 100 people went was obliterated and they came up to the cemetery and we set up a mini little kind of refuge mm -hmm. site. And then so we, uh, myself delegated along with Benny, the, the lead guy, uh, some uh, positions. Uh, some were waterline uh, watchers. I was in charge of looking through contingency plans and if you saw that one photo of them walking up. The Indians uh, had a secret passageway called the Hidden Trail that we found. It was almost like straight from a movie, Indiana <laughs> Jones. Uh, and so I got, I started looking for sailors and climbers and people who could tie knots. We, someone brought a professional rope um, because we had elderly people, people who weren't experienced climbers. And this was a moderate to uh, expert type trail. So we got, we, the four of us climbed up to 100 foot type wall. We climbed up and in about 30 minutes we got 120 people up uh, with this rope to the to that and then that was pretty much our trail back to the village and that was another two and a half miles. So it Un was unbelievable story that you guys have and great organizational skills on your part Doc. Joelle when you first heard that rush of water how afraid were you? We were both really afraid Beverly to be honest. There were two points where we both truly thought our lives were very much in danger. You heard the young man who we knew from the trip say that he died like almost three times. There were moments when we said a couple prayers because we really weren't sure if we were going to get out. And the first time that we heard the rushing water in the campsite was the scariest moment. The second time when we heard the calls from the tribal members using their voices, which meant danger, and everybody running up, and we just didn't have any space left on the sacred ground, and the only way to go was up. We said our prayers, and then we went into uh, survival mode. Well, those prayers were answered. We're so <laughs> glad both of you are safe tonight, and, and good job getting those folks organized. Thank you very much for being with us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Now, your weather across Arizona. All right, we're going to start out with some new pictures from the DPS just supplied to us of up in the uh,